Welcome to another session episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2. Uh, it's funny, uh, I'm having technical issues, as you probably can tell from everything, uh, so I don't have all of my usual accoutrement in front of me, but I have my players, I have me, I have my notes. See if we can manage to get through this. It's been a little while. Uh, I'm still getting myself back into it. I'm Mark the Encaffinated One, the GM, but I have my players with me as well as their players, as well as their characters, I should say, starting with Pat. Hi, uh, my name is Pat, and I am playing Silas Marsh. And Marie. Hi, uh, I'm Marie, and I'm playing Annie. And Nax. You're muted, Nax. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half or cleric. Awesome. Since it has been a little while, I prepared a bit of a uh, of a recap to get us back into reminding ourselves. This was written as much for me as it was for you guys, but hopefully it's helpful for uh, for the players. It is the time of the great confusion. Everyone has experienced something of cosmic importance, but most do not have any indication of what it was. The characters have discovered the cause, the dramatic and then gradual removal of a god from the celestial landscape and the physical world. They have been asked to help remove remnants of that god by a gynosphinx named Cathron. Cathron, however, is believed lost after being brought into a strange realm overseen by a beholder with a bow tie known as Tauzek Riva. We go back a little further. The party each arrived in the port town of did my voice just go weird there that's what it sounded like to me no <clears throat> technical goblins they are they are tough the party each arrived in the port town of Aelthwater on the western coast of the island of Ascus, part of the kingdom of alaria and one of the 55 islands of omesha each came through the great confusion young medric half-orc warrior priest kamar of the sun god ignis disembarked from a ship full of other soldiers, having returned from a war they could not remember. Some time before, Silas Marsh had arrived on the shore just north of the promontory known as Raven's Bluff, him and his family all fleeing from an unknown enemy on a distant island, perhaps in part due to the family's devotion to an ancient snake god known as the Mother, or Mother Hydra, or some to some beings, Zagwatha. Annie arrived, on a merchant. <laughs> Annie arrived on a merchant ship, keen to see the world far outside of the royal apartments, where she was known as Annelise, the Princess Montrose. But a nightmare memory strikes her from time to time, of, the ship ca of that ship capsizing and all hands lost. And recently, she started hearing voices, or at least one voice. The town of Aelthwater on the surface appearing to be a sleepy port for cargo transportation and a thriving fishing industry has been revealed to the party as a crossroads of sorts, a nexus point of dangerous portents, a battleground for terrible forces. The great confusion seems, somehow, to have awakened an ancient enemy of the gods, a powerful necromancer and inventor named Taraz Nakma Duagaul, thought to perhaps be the last surviving member of the legendary race of people known as the Athlons, who challenged the gods themselves for dominion. Now this undead tyrant seeks to raise the long-buried dissected carcass of an incredible mechanical flesh hybrid living weapon, one of the mythical titans, which seems to be buried in and around Aelthwater. Apparently allied with the Athlonian, a swarm of sea devils also threatens the town and the fishermen in the area. A band of shadow-infused marauders have terrorized the town in recent months, ultimately to take on Baron Harquin himself. It has been revealed to the party that the leader of these, known as the Diamond, is apparently none other than the woodsman named Gauld, who claims to be the Baron's brother, betrayed and left for dead. The Baroness is at the center of her own concerns, however, as she seems to be the target of a cabal of, of a cabal of hags who have somehow bound her soul to that of a sleeping giant great dragon, green dragon in particular. After a recent coup, however, one of those hags was expelled from the trio, replaced by another who was apparently left out of the workings. 
incursions from other planes of existence seem to be erupting all over town, throwing demonic beings into buildings. They seem to be searching for something. In one of those travels, a companion of Medrick's named Melora Cartwright and an elemental ally whom the party had dubbed Graveler were both taken. The party believes it was a realm known as the Shadow. A mysterious figure clad all in white has also been seen, surveying the activity going on, but not being seen. After being confronted, he introduced himself as Tassar, a colleague of Cathron's in the work of extricating the dead god's presence. He implores them to search for components, which can be used to help stabilize the portals from opening, and in turn he promises to help them search for Cathron and Melora. And that brings us to today. The group has just been sent through a portal by Tassar to a realm he believes holds some of the raw materials he needs. They arrive along with their friend and librarian slash historian Dudek in what appears to be an ancient fortified underground bunker. There they find evidence of a long lost organization, the Argenti Sagax, for which Dudek has been searching. The evidence takes the form of several long dead bodies adorned with symbols of the order each with a strange after-death injury of a larger-than-normal eye socket. Noises are also heard, including a conversation between the Baroness Harquin and the strange beholder Tauzek Riva. After taking, out, after taking out a strangely mad, floating eyeball creature, the group is welcomed warmly by Riva at a distance, who asks them to come into the light. So... That more or less brings us to where we are right now. You are in an underground cavern. You'd previously discovered that there is a hatch going upward to some strange plane of Earth. At least that's what Dudek suggests. It might actually be the plane of Earth. This uh, bunker uh, had been, it seemed, abandoned a long time ago, but now seems to be occupied, or some might say infested, by strange creatures that seem to be aligned with Tauzek Riva, the gigantic beholder, eyeball with eye stalks and a bow tie, who has um, previously been seen trapped in that other realm, referred to as a haunted house uh, that was back in the, um, back in the, oh, what's the term I'm looking for? The parade, the, the, the festival that was on the going carnival. on. Carnival, Carnival, thank you. Carnival, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Tauzek Riva, uh, who I think you can barely see from where you are right now. There's only a little bit of light in here, but those of you with dark vision can make out the broadly smiling, way too many teeth face of Tauzek Riva as he looks in your direction. May or may not see you. Uh, some of you have taken some precaution to hide a little bit, uh, but... Uh, yeah, the warm welcome uh, uh, comes in. Uh, let me see. I actually have it written down. Uh, let's see. He says, uh, too many notes. Ah, it is the believer, the firebrand, the blank, and ah, the seeker. Please come and we can all know each other better. Um, last session, Silas had detected a magic item under the body that he's near. A lantern, uh, I believe. Um, no, uh, we weren't sure what it was. There was a lantern that was there that we grabbed, but there was actually one that was hidden under the body. Uh, so he's going to flip the body over and just grab whatever that is. Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember which one that was because I had put a bunch of stuff in here. Do you remember any other description about it? No, I remember he saw he could see the aura of it, but I don't. I wonder maybe on the Facebook one I wrote what the type was. Uh, you can go, go on to the others. I mean, he'll. Uh, there was a collar and a lamp that you had already grabbed. Yeah, uh, I think that's what I think that's what you'd found there. Well, there were those two. There was the the uh, collar that the corpse was wearing, and the lamp was on the table. But there was something under 
Let's see if I've got that. So I'm just looking at the. Uh, Silas removes the collar and grabs the lamp. He sees there's still a magical glow under the body, but it is diffuse. Okay. I've got nothing. <laughs> uh, let's. See I checked my notes. Here. I don't have anything either. Yeah, no, I think that's all that we we uh, we had. Okay. Magic is diffuse. I think I know what that is. But... My notes are all related to the dudek of it all. Mm. <laughs> yes, dudek was attempting to, uh, I believe, activate some of the strange magical... Um, uh, dudek trying to put his necklace to apps, power fire dimension link is yeah. the note that I have. And I believe I have like my hand on his head trying to keep it on his head. Like on his neck. Well, and being quite uh, uh, quite distracted now, him with uh, the voice of Tauzek Riva. Do any of you say anything? We'll say you have it. I'll figure out what it is. Uh, later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Um, hey, Silas will stand up and says. Is it Tau Zek Riva or Tau Vek Riva? I think it's Zek. For some reason, I put a V. Pretty sure it's uh, Zek. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he'll st uh, he'll uh, he'll stand up, uh, move a little more into the open area. The Tau Zek Riva. Uh, funny running into you here. Uh, Silas is kind of obviously just trying to stand in the middle and occupy his attention as the others can do whatever they're they want to do. Uh, yeah, I'll come out of my hiding spot too, mainly because I glow in the dark, so I'm probably, I'm probably not hiding to begin with. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like hiding hiding with a a, a, a a candle in front of you. I'm not here, I am a tree, bright spot, <laughs> a glowing tree. Um, both of you noticed floating not too far away, um, quite silently, is another smaller creature, um, not entirely unlike the one you had killed before, but this one is absolutely silent. Um, it does not uh, make the same sort of um, broad noises and and uh, um, and uh, muttering to itself that the other one did. Um, just want to make sure I get the description right here. Um, it is similar to uh, Tau, and it is round and does have a, a limited number of of uh, tentacles. It does a, does have a broader than you might expect mouth as well, but its surface is uh, uh, hard and spiky. Um, it's a dark green and only four eye stalks. A long tongue comes out, which kind of just washes over each of the eye stalks and kind of keeping the eyes more moist and uh, and clear. And it's kind of just floating there. Uh, you're not sure what it wants to do, but it seems to be paying attention to the conversation. I would like to take this moment of slight distraction of us being approached by a beholder to try to put myself in between Dudek and the thing that he's trying to put his necklace in. Sure, he's completely distracted by this this thing there, especially because it seemed to be familiar with you, and you seem to be familiar with it. Um, so the, there's a, there's a moment there where you kind of step behind him to step towards the nozzle that he was playing with, and he kind of is a little bit aware of you moving behind him, and there is a little look that crosses his face of are, are you are you standing behind me for protection? <laughs> so you see him kind of straighten his shoulders up a little <laughs> bit. Uh, as if, as if he's going to, as if, as if this <laughs> academic uh, is oh, he's, going he's to, going to uh, be leap into action. Behind me, if it, if anything happens, but like I also don't want him to literally kill himself and prevent him from being able to get back to our dimension. It would be bad. It would be bad. Um, from um, Tauzek Riva, um, actually, uh, each of you make. Let's call it. Let's call it a wisdom saving throw. Oh yeah, this is when I remember when I forget to 
pop out my character sheet. There we go. Uh, and we're not worried about that. roll 20 positioning at the moment unless we get into a combat. So if you want to roll physical dice at this point, that's fine too. Um, or D&D right. Beyond get dice. Combat with the beholder. <laughs> 10. Please don't Oof. save. 25. Wow. Nice. That's a nat 20. Nice. What do we have from uh, from Nax and from, or sorry, from uh, Medric and from Annie? Got to remember the character names are not on my screen Ten. anymore. Pen. Okay. So you said wisdom save. Mm hmm. Modifier. Pen's the egg. Let's go. 19. 19. Nice. Um, I do have to look something up. Sorry. Uh, just realized. Think. Okay. Um, for both Medric and uh, and Silas, um, you feel this pressure on your mind, um, and you feel it kind of pushing in ever so gently on your thoughts. Um, you you kind of get the sense that it has already taken stock of anything you were immediately thinking of, but as it moves in to move a little bit deeper to try to penetrate into your thinking, um, both of you find yourself with an inner reserve of strength. It's probably different in how each of you approach such a thing. Do you want to describe how that how you uh, protect your mind from incursion? Silas, maybe we'll start we'll with just, you. Oh, no, go ahead, uh, Manax. If I was just going to visualize a flame. And okay, focus so on you only burn the away the influence. Sure. Yeah. Ignis oh, shields your mind. For Silas. Silas, that's a natural 20. That's the protection of the mother. All right. Maybe the calming thought of the mother's embrace. Um, and he gets uh, nothing from your... me. <laughs> mm. No, I'm thinking well, from this... mother. Tazek Weaver gets mine. Okay. Yeah, you actually will feel that sort of snap of almost electricity of the rejection. Um, and you kind of notice coincidentally with that, there's a a, 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 a a rapid and somewhat surprised blink that comes from Tao Zekriva's large, central, enormous eye. For you, Annie, you actually do feel something. It's like... It's like you're several blankets away and you can kind of feel that something is moved on the bed that you're you're sleeping on. And a young female voice says, I don't think so. It sounds vaguely familiar, but you can't quite place it. Silent after that. And that's even with the, the ring of mind shielding? It is. Um, well, 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 it looks as though you've all drawn your cloaks around your heads. Nice. It's always good to know that there are strong-minded people aligned with very powerful things out there. It is, however, or it is rather the same technique that I use. But please, let's not stand on formality in a dusty corridor. Come into the central chamber. You can see what I'm about. And maybe, just maybe, we can speak like civilized beings. Yes? Yes. And it withdraws sure. back through an open uh, opening. And you can kind of see that um, the center part of this is somewhat rounded there's a corridor that lean the turn goes off to the left and to the right those channels in the floor um continue and seem to merge and turn and twist in different directions there it is a sign somewhat of of destruction but not explosive destruction it's more like um if all of these walls, which have some carvings on them that, that resemble some of the symbols and adornment you'd seen of the uh, Argenti Sagax before, 
it's it's as though all of these were kind of shifted and melted and reformed in a in a almost um almost a relentless way the way that water will carve out rock it feels almost like those have been done that way before you i move can, can i do something sure i would like to slightly push dudek forward and i'd like to shove my glove into the hole that he was going to put his necklace thing in not to jam it but just to be something in the way to give me the chance to stop him if needed <laughs> sure um it doesn't uh, take more than an easy sleight of hand no one's really paying attention to you you've got you're kind of hidden from view by dudek as well dudek himself uh is kind of stumbling forward almost stiffly um almost as though he's he's um kind of only vaguely aware of even where he stands and kind of stepping forward in a little bit of a of a herky-jerky motion. And once we're like 10 feet away from the thing, I'll put him behind me again. Okay. okay As you walk him around him, he, he barely even notices you're there and you can see a kind of blank expression on his face. Um, it's hard to read at this point what that expression is. Um. And as you you kind of move a little deeper in, there are there are narrow pathways that sort of provide you with a little walkway into the central area. There is a central dais um, which has around it a little ring of stone, and then there are gaps leading to somewhere deep below where all the light that you have here doesn't really reach. Um, you can also make out in that surround in that surroundings uh, three pillars that seem to have uh, a, an array of bits and bobs. Um, you see a few small pieces of crystal, something that looks like a porcelain uh, uh, mug that's been half torn. Um, you see bits of metal and cloth and bone. Um, you see. Um, sort of what looks like wire that's wrapped around some of these things, uh, all kind of creating on each of these pillars uh, a sort of, uh, it looks almost, to our modern eyes, it would look like the mockery of a machine um, in that there are interwound bits here and there that seem to be, if we were to take it in a modern sense, like cogs and machine parts interwoven. Um, little bits of of sparking uh, uh power uh emanating once in a while from these these gatherings around each of those are squat creatures who if they stood tall would be taller probably even than silas so i think is silas and annie i think are the two tallest ones no? is six is six foot six Medrick is the tall one i thought that for some reason silas was i think it's the nope, silas is the with. shortest <laughs> pardon me so they would stand taller than, well, they would still still stand taller than Silas or Annie. It would be about the same height as Medrick, but they are, are uh, sort of bent over. They are humanoid with a, a greenish skin, long, thin uh, limbs that end in um, three or four fingers on each hand. Doesn't seem to be consistent between them. Um, they have uh, only a small amount of cloth around them, um, for PG modesty, not necessarily for uh, any any effect of, of warmth. Uh, and each of them on their foreheads, is it's pretty much dominated by one large eye um, that looks at you all. They have jagged mouths, not entirely un, un, dissimilar to, uh, to um, Tauzek Riva himself or the strange floating eyeballs, but these ones are attached with limbs. Um, for those of you who are aware of the creature uh, of a Nothic within uh, the D&D sphere, that is the image. Um, but you, if you, you, in the player's mind, detach it from its original origin and imagine as if it is a, a creature built up to support the eye. And everything else is kind of an addendum and this mockery of humanoid shape. 
and there are a number of them kind of gathered around um some of them tinkering with a little bits every once in a while with one of sparks they kind of withdraw back with a little bit of a of a of a guttural uh uh eep it's not fully uh voiced um and to the far end of this room which is semicircular but with only walls on the inside, the interior part that you had traveled to, you see that there's more or less a, uh, I can turn on daylight mode there, that might help. Uh, if you are looking at the map, which I am basically yeah, just, 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 just describing. Ask, can, we, can, can we update the map? Because it looks like there's huh. stuff blocked. What I will do is actually turn off dynamic lighting. I don't really need it in this particular context anymore. So you should see a flat, ah. uh, a flat color. Uh, you no longer see the glow coming from Medric or a little bit of a greenish glow that comes from uh, from Tauzek Riva himself. But the so imagine a bowl sculpted into a side of a mountain, and out from the bowl, this promenade which leads out into open space it's cloudy like a large massive fog, ba fog bank that covers the entirety of outside and almost lost in the vision of uh of this or in the end of this um walkway is an enormous round shape that is apparently carved from stone and um resembles a gigantic eye. You can see that down at the far end. I'm using someone else's map, so. Yep. Uh, Is this a Titan uh, part? I'm reinterpreting things that are here. Um, and Tao kind of watches you all come through, floats in. Um, each of you probably take a bit of a of a of a. Uh, of a cautious step because walking from that outer walkway to the central spire most of the floor essentially has uh dissolved leaving that abyss that sort of almost uh, uh almost uh, uh um moat like space uh, around the uh the central place hopefully i've described that uh to some adequacy but um, but Tao and the others, actually, all of them kind of turned to watch you come in. Um, most um, um, notably, the the large one that was watching you before, the one that has the green scaly skin, four eye, uh, eye stalks, uh, is just sort of watching each of you. Uh, and with any, any movement that's slightly more than uh, simple walking, if you happen to to stumble a little bit or you move a little bit quickly, you can see the eye focus in on that. You also see that there's a number of these around. With the um, the ones that were tinkering, they all kind of turn your way. Um, and once again, I will have you all make three wisdom saving throws in this case as you feel the pressure of their gaze. 19 again. Nice. Is it magic? Like three individual or like each one? Yeah, three three checks for each of you. Okay. As there's oh. three different creatures that are focusing on you. 19, 11, and 20. Yeah. 8, 15, and oh. 17. Uh, if it's wow. magic, it's 19, 22, and another 25. <laughs> nice. Jeez. Okay. Um... So you feel their full gaze fall upon you. And it's an unblinking look. It's kind of unnerving because it's it's sort of uh, uh, you can feel a pressure from that from that view. You also kind of get the sense, and I think probably Silas would have the most clear indication of this based on how strong his his defenses are and how much the mother is protecting him. You get the sense that it's not even it's not even an, an intentional thing. It's as though they cannot help it. This is how they see the world. Um, just as, as some creatures uh, use echolocation to sense the world, some use blind sight to see sights, uh, see 
lights beyond uh, the normal visible spectrum. This is how they observe the world uh, more than anything else. And so there's a sort of surface level understanding. For one brief instant, one of them gains an insight into Medric. Um, so for Medric, uh, I'd like you to tell me, just going to check on how they phrase this. Uh, Okay. Tell me if okay, what would what would be a secret that Medric keeps? Uh, I don't know. Could also be a fact that he's never told anybody that no one else would likely know. So it could be, you know birth parents, or it could be um, <coughs> something like that. I'll let you think about that as I go yeah. to the reaction that happens for Annie. For you, Annie, once more, you feel this pressure, as the others have as well. But again, you feel it as though distant. You feel it kind of concentrate um, as um, one by one, each, uh, all of those strange eyeball creatures turns and specifically watches you as you come through. Um, you can make an insight check. And yeah, let's have the, the insight check be the, the thing. 15. 15? Um, you're kind of getting the sense that they are all extraordinarily curious about you. Now, knowing that there's sort of this mental pressure that occurs around these creatures, the insight that you get into that is they all kind of tilt their heads slightly as though they're absolutely fascinated with the person they cannot hear, they cannot see in a way. On the inside, you feel your own resolve strong, but weaken for just a brief second. And you get a vision, a face comes to mind. A young human girl, probably no more than 14 or so. The face looks surprised. Light brown hair, short, wearing a very inexpensive dress. And she looks familiar. Maybe one of the servants? And then it's gone. Medric, a fact or right. secret? Okay, so uh, I'm on mute. No, I'm not. Not really a Go secret, ahead. but something that no, nobody really knows. It's uh, well, Medric, even though he's not good at scholarly arts or writing, he enjoys writing stories about characters uh, that already exist in other people's stories and like making them go on grand adventures. In other words, like Medric writes. He writes fan. fan <laughs> <fic>. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. I don't know how that's <laughs> going to work into anything in the future, but I will. I will do my best. All right. And you're kind of aware that um, in that in that weird moment when the, one of these creatures is looking at you, you start to imagine a story featuring them, and that's when you start to think about how much fun it is to write these stories, and then you kind of see the creature do a slow blink as it's looking at you as if and maybe even and maybe this is just your imagination but maybe even a small nod as in okay then and then it turns its attention off to annie did it just know like <laughs> i keep grabbing the wrong mouse um but um reva kind of leads you in and kind of floats backward to keep an eye on you uh, as kind of also kind of waving his his tentacles, uh, his tentacled eyes in a sort of gesturing uh, motion to come forward. You see, you see, my beautiful creations, not yet perfect, not enough for, and with half of the tentacles gestures to the 
large eyeball statue at the end. Not enough yet for Oculon, but I'm working on it. Industrious am I, industrious. But what brings you here? Why are you here? I mean, besides the obvious interest in those old bones. In here, uh, where Silas was out before in the hallway, you had mentioned there was a uh, blackboard with strange mm -hmm. writing on it. Is there anything like that in here? Um, yes and no. Um, the floor seems to be adorned with what could be uh, considered faint versions of similar symbols like that, ones that have been there a long time ago and hasn't been swept over. Uh, each of those pillars, too, you, you notice that there is a bit of carving into the pillars, mostly obscured by the additions that uh, Tao and his people have made. But you do kind of recognize, looking around, a little bit of those symbols, or at least something like it. Um, Annie, uh, you notice that Dudek steps to the side and steps a little bit forward. We're here to find remnants of... Portal technology, crystals. We're here to help Tassar and his mission and find other portals to help their friends return. And he's just kind of, um, Annie, you can make an insight check here as well. That's a, an 18. 18? Um, it's still Dudek. But he seems to be about to divulge everything he's thinking, everything about why he's here. Just going to continue to speak. I won't do it all in real time, but that's the general yep. gist you're getting. Um, he do, he, I'll, I'll he holds up the amulet and, and says, this, this is here to protect us from being lost I'll, I'll step in, in, mists. in front of him. Uh, and and say our our friends were pulled in, in through a portal and we're trying to find them. And I'll I'll go to, I'll go on to describe my friends and Graveler or my friend and Graveler. Um, and when there's a pause in the conversation, you hear from behind uh, uh, Annie as the other glove is going to, to, to go start, into his mouth if he keeps talking. Start, he starts. To, he's <laughs> he's going to continue. He seems very interested in answering the question. Mark? Yes? Uh, from the staff, command, stop. Oh, interesting. Uh, that is... Uh, okay, what save is that? I do have to get his uh, sheet up at this point. See, oh, no. It's... They get a uh, wisdom save, and that would okay. be against 15. All right. In this case, um, it's a very uh, noticeable thing when you cast something like that. Yep. Um, I, I will say that at this point, you also um, you know, make an arcana check, actually. Kind of nine. Okay. Uh, the spell goes off without a hitch, and Dudek's mouth clamps shut. Um, Nanny, you can hear that he's still speaking, but he's, his mouth is closed now. <laughs> Poor Dudek. <laughs> hum. Oh, you're no fun. He's very informative. Mm. Would you be as informative with us? Maybe. Depends on the question, I suppose. Exactly. You see, I see you once, and that is by random chance. I see you again, and I think it means something. I think it means that we have similar goals or paths to, well, when he kind of glances down as he says tread as they say which means we can be fast allies or something else 
If you want a chance of us to be allies, release our friend. Can release I, him? Can I get a history know. check on Tazek from what you just told me? Sure. Uh, 16. Um, I think with the 16, there is a genuineness to his, his, his uh, potential seeking of allies. There's also a distinct threat of if we're not on the same path or if we are on the same path and you stand in my way, it will be bad. Um, who are you to demand such things? I learn as I learn. If you wish us to be allies, you must release our friend. If you do not release our friend, we cannot be allies. Interesting how you that. treat your friends, commanding them as you will, but as a gesture of magnanimous position. And he kind of blinks, and uh, Dudek kind of stops mumbling, his mouth still sort of clamped shut. Yeah, mm. the command mm. only lasts for a few seconds anyways. Okay. Um, well, that was odd. Still, um, how did you come to be here? An interesting question. Considering last my time travels. I saw you, you were in, in some sort of fun house. Mm, yes, it was rather fun for a long time. I learned to make it fun after car accident outside. Uh, I learned to make it fun after being imprisoned there for so long. One has to find a way to be amused, after all. But, fortunately, the destruction of that place came at the right time. Those worms, or whatever they were, I'm still not entirely sure, wormed their way through that little dimension, and I found a hole and took it. I didn't find it very hospitable on the other side, however, so it's taken me some time to find this little place, although it does stand out as a bit of a beacon in this vast, empty wilderness. Wait, who bound you in the funhouse to begin with? Oh, it was a terrible disagreement. They didn't see eye to eye with me. <laughs> but that's far in the past now. Frankly, I think they should have joined me. I'll ask him, well, because we saw Catherine like floating around in the void when we were in the fun house, right? So I'll ask him, it's like, do you recall the, the, the Gyno Sphinx? Do you know oh, yes, was? that was... That was a remarkable surprise. A combination, I think, of my own abilities plus the piercing of that particular realm. Normally, anything summoned in there is but a phantasm, somehow connected to its original being, but she seemed to be a little more solid than I was expecting, and wandered out into the wastes, and is no doubt still wandering, trying to find anything solid to hold on to. And the ways in the realm we're in right now? Not exactly. Beyond that, and with, with the tentacles on his left-hand side, he kind of gestures out to the vast, um, cloudy, uh, empty space. Beyond all of that lies the ethereal plane. Sorry, the astral plane is what I meant to say. That's me, not, not him. Okay. A vast emptiness in which there are small pockets of useful things. This being one of those pockets, a little tiny realm carved out of, I believe, the plane of Earth, but set adrift in this land, a small little outpost used by those corpses once before. And my wife? 
Ah, is that who that was? I had only a little bit of connection there. It's quite powerful sometimes, but not entirely out of my control. You see, I am but a servant of the great Oculon, the one who witnesses all, the thing that sees. And sometimes, with the blessing and power of my all-powerful and all-seeing god or being or whatever term you prefer, patron, I'm able to pull the threads of connection that happen that are interwoven between the personal lives and souls of beings. And I can pull a little bit. In that realm, I had amused myself by pulling those things which people had feared the most for the most part. It was, as you might imagine, what I was called to do by my once master, the one who controlled the realm although he didn't really know much about it, he inherited it through several different generations and decided the carnival was the best way to express it. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I pulled on that thread for each of you. I had to make a bit of a guess in your case. And he sort of turns and looks towards Annie. Those three <laughs> are still watching you as if looking for anything that might happen. And there's almost, and again, getting your, your insight before, there's almost a, 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 a disbelief. They kind of move around a little bit slowly. And whenever you happen to look in their direction, they stand completely still staring at you. But you notice every time you look back, they've moved <laughs> as they're moving a little bit closer and kind of moving around you. And you have a cat. You know how sometimes if you're not watching your cat, it will move up. And as soon as you look, it stops. Looking completely innocent. That's what these are doing as well. I was doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am not really. You did not see no. me. I am not on the stove at all. That, that's Hold how on. I like things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is my response to what Dora is saying. Um. Sorry, it was response to which part? I kind of cut my. I, I threw myself. I had to make a guess for, a for for you. For oh yes, there. right, right. Indeed. I have my own guesses towards you, and I think you're not even, not even aware of half of them. Oh, but you could be a very interesting conversation if you wished. Right. Nonetheless. Nonetheless. Well, and his eye flashes blue for a second. You see, I believe it's that ring. Powerful. Very, very powerful. I'm sure you don't even know exactly why. <laughs> but that's something we can discover together later, if you so desire. I As missed Medrick's friends question, and but that was the answer, too. Um, uh, Medrick asked why. Oh. Why there was something special about you. Oh. I was like, care to enlighten us about what right. his questions are. <laughs> yeah. But... We can talk about that as friends in a friendly situation. But as I said, I was called upon to frighten people. And the things that people are connected to are often the most frightening. But in the case of the rest of you, it seemed a little different. You were all connected to this Cathron. Although, again, making a bit of an assumption and connected to your wife and your former master, I suppose? Mentor. Mentor. Ah, that's such a nice word. So plucking on those strings as I am able to do, especially in that place, whoever created that original realm, that strange little place in which I was kept, had no real idea what they were doing. They thought they did, but over a century or six, you can change things. Even here, I've been able to make my own little, uh, my own little uh, uh, homage to the great I myself. Do you like it? I've guessed at some of the proportions. It looks based. Like like an eyeball, yeah. You you did a good job. Uh, ah, thank your you. Pa your patron. Can he see anything in any realm? And if yes, could he help us locate our friends? 
And also, well, the I would like to make the... a history check on Anakulon to see if I know anything from sure, studies. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, can I make a relation check too, actually? Sure. That's good. Did you, did you get her to make a check, Silas? <laughs> can I make a mad occultist check? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Uh, 23 for history. 23 for history. All right. How about the religion? Not 20 for a 22. Not 20 for 22. Yeah. Woo. Okay. It's a lore heavy day, that's for sure. How about for Silas? For the whatever role you're making. <laughs> I'll just make a straight up intelligence role. Okay. Seven. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, so, first of Not all, my let's particular start, aberration. Sorry. Let's start with, um, with uh, Medric. So, um, the teachings of Ignis, first of all, they begin with Ignis. They also end with Ignis, and Ignis is kind of in the middle as well. But along the way, there is acknowledgement that there are other gods in the world. Uh, you are familiar with the primary pan uh, pantheon mm -hmm. that is here, uh, with one exception, which is that Paluxia is not mentioned, was not mentioned in your education, or you feel, actually, what you, you kind of thinking back on it, you feel there was something else, but it isn't there. And you've been kind of slowly filling in a little bit of it based on what Catherine had said. A god is missing. Um, but there is acknowledgement that the multiverse is larger than this world. And there are powerful beings beyond the multiverse that have existed. Many of them seem to condense down to a singular feature or singular um, power. But in that power, they are absolute. So it is entirely possible that there is a being which can see everything. Whether it has any power beyond that is a question. However, at least from what you can see of Tauzek Riva, um, there does seem to be demonstrated power. You don't think of him necessarily as a cleric of Oculon. May not even be um, a patron or a, a, a follower in the same way that you know that Silas is a follower of the mother. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere between the two of those. So the name Just Oculon. Just a regular super fan. Yeah, could be. Really, really dig, you know, what you're doing. Um, uh, you know, where's the pendant in the jersey? It's it's a crazy sort of thing. Does the, the things at sports. Um, and now I'm derailing myself. Uh, so the name Oculon doesn't come up. You have a feeling that if it had ever been mentioned, you would have remembered it. But, but based on the description he's given, there are some names that come to mind. Um, and they're only told in kind of almost fairy tale like stories. And this is where we come into Annie's uh, perception as well, because there is a history of the world. There is a creation myth of Omisha. But even as a kid, I think Annie would ask the question, but what came before that? <laughs> and what came before that? And that it's gets turtles answered all the way by, down. <laughs> it's sort of, that gets answered by these sort of uh, mythic tales of, of beings, beings that formed themselves out of nothing, chose their form, sometimes chose to split into different forms sometimes chose to become a multitude. And you remember a story, a, a, a fairy tale you were told when you were just a young, uh, young girl of the Watcher on the Threshold. The story was told as in something that we'll know everything you've done, and it was used as a morality tale. You'd better not do something wrong or the Watcher on the Threshold will know. And at the end of all things, they will judge you. Um, for Medric, there's an apocalyptic tale, which is the end of all things. And at the end of all things, there will be one to witness it. The one who sees all. The end of all things is when 
the universe ends. The exact details of how it ends are a little bit vague. There's some notion of a war. There's some notion of destruction. And there's some notion of dissolving as the universe dissolves. Another story comes to your mind, Annie. If there is one to see everything, there is one who knows everything and does not speak. The being known as the secret keeper, who finds all secrets but keeps all secrets. Now, for you, Medric, there is a tale. This would be a tale that would have been told probably from initiate to initiate, who mm -hmm. said they heard it from an older initiate, who said they heard it from, you know, some, some old scholar somewhere about a god of some kind. The story changed three or four times as you heard it. A few pieces keep consistent. But the, the god saw the world and didn't want to know part of it. So okay. they tore out their own eye. But being a godly eye, it could not be destroyed. So maybe that's this eye being. And there are little snippets of dozens of tales that come to mind. So if you think of anyone as well, I have, I literally have a dozen stories here, but I'm not going to go through all of them. But yeah, you have it in mind that there may be little threads that others have picked up in, on through time. Okay. That you don't remember, but maybe with some research, you could find out more, if you so wished. But it does seem like Tao is digging into some deep lore here. Okay. I thought Oculon was a fairy tale. Well, yes, of course. Like all great tales, the greatest of tales anyway, there are elements of truth within them. I, and with this weird gesture of the eye stalks, as if they are arms and hands kind of gesturing at himself, I am living proof of the power of Oculon. I was not born as you see me. I was raised to this greater form. Kind of basks in his glory for a moment. Slightly looking off. It's got one of those poses where the whole body kind of shifts. He's looking at some invisible... Uh, you know, video camera in the sky, which he's posing to, and all of the all of the arms are kind of following. Again, very arm like. Uh, sorry, all the eye stalks are following very arm like gestures. You get a feeling too that he's probably practiced some of this a bit. And now he's got an audience. <laughs> Basically, the play that I'm trying to pull is he's very interested in us, but also seems to like to talk about himself. And hasn't had a lot of people who wanted to listen. Yeah, the insight you have there is he he's mentioned several hundred years of probably scaring people, or at least a hundred years of scaring people. You don't get a lot of conversation out of scaring people. Um, well, Annie's occupying his attention. Um, the uh, the dead looking guys on the map are they dried husks on the ground or are they undead or something else? Uh, so there's one right there. Is that what you're meaning? Those guys? Oh, you're muted. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see one further down as well, but probably Silas doesn't see it. Yeah, from where you're you're positioning, if you if you kind of take a closer look, and I, I can imagine, 
kind of looking around at these things. You had some interest in mm -hmm. the symbols before. And as you move closer, you realize that sort of bound up in the bottom part of this uh, of this pillar uh, is a very dead body, very similar to the other bodies you've seen before. Also having that large um, uh, extrusion, if you will, of the eye socket, of one eye socket. Uh, Silas is going to refresh uh, his Eldritch sight so he can see, keep seeing magic. Okay. Um, These pillars, by the way, and the things that are around them do emanate magic, but it's very chaotic. It doesn't seem to conform to a particular school. It seems to be kind of shifting constantly. And there's little wisps of smoke as the power ebbs and then kind of burns through something and then passes away. Okay. And what is the... Uh, the sparkly thing in the middle. Uh, oh, actually, that should not be on the map right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that's to the. Yeah, it's not letting it's it's not letting me move my character on the map more than. Oh, you it yeah. won't let you move through the the uh, wall. You have to go to a clear spot. Like just go up over here. Uh -huh. so. ba basically, there are walls where there are walls. That's exhausting. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry it had a better use before for when, when I needed the uh, the spookiness, but that's been no yeah. problem. I just thought it was my uh, roll twenty being all wonky. <laughs> so, what is your purpose here, Tozek Riva? Why should we be interested in helping you? This is a convenient stopover point in my ultimate goals. It was the sort of thing I was looking for, a place where those who've come before have had some success. Um, these um, Argentis Sagax. Uh, researchers. Yes, you, you know more about them? I know a bit more. They had capabilities. Most do not. Their research into traversing the plains is what I'm interested in. You see, while Oculon sees all, it's so far away. I want to move him closer, move it closer. So I'm seeking some assistance there. And these trinkets that I've built so far, they do not satisfy. I get small glimpses into their majestic sight, but it passes too quickly. From what I understand, all of you might be somewhat interested in a bit of planar traversal as well. Yeah, we've got a few uh, friends and allies to retrieve. And uh, Oculon, it, it, what's he about, like, in general? Is he good, bad? What are his goals? These so labels the of good goes. And... <laughs> what? These labels of good and right bad back. are far too small for such a being. But where, does, does, it, does he just look at stuff and know as much as possible and leave the world pretty much alone, or...? Why would anyone leave the world alone? There's so much to know at every level. And to truly know the world, to truly know the multiple of planes, you must experience it. It must be experienced in you. But what I'm getting but at I is he's am. not going to commit... He, if, we, if we were to bring him closer, he's not going to commit mass murder, though, is he? What is mass murder but a simple disagreement? Mm. But more than simple. The ending of some beings probably will happen. It tends to be the sort of thing that happens when there's traversal of planes by great powerful beings. That's not a reason not to do it. And he'll look at Silas. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I After was all, saying anything right now. There are greater <laughs> purposes in life. And some people will always disagree with those greater purposes. And if they should throw their lives away in futile pursuit of ending your purposes, they might die. And they might die en masse. So, yes, it could happen. The opposition would be terrible. Unwarranted. So, some of us will be sent ahead to prepare people for the arrival, once we know the arrival can happen. Mm, what do you guys think? Um, Silas is going to... Hmm. Given the proficiency in mental stuff they've seen... Eh, whatever. Uh, Silas is going to speak into Annie and uh, Medrick's heads uh, and say that he may make a convenient partner in trying to get those you wish, but you're going to have to kill him after. He is not... I do not believe that Oculon is going to simply be some benevolent demigod. I'll think back. Uh, well, even if it's just neutral. But oh, yeah. Crazy roll. <laughs> yep. Um, as, as you watch, uh, as uh, maybe trying to hide it, but not really capable because mm -hmm. he has 10 eyes, uh, you, do, you will notice <laughs> All that. All of them uh, just... They're, they're kind of, you see a few of them trying to be casual. He's not really good at that particular part of things. Uh, as some of the eyes kind of just wander off and are looking at, oh, look at the rock over there. And it, but the rest are all kind of like, like watching a tennis match as the conversation shifts between minds. Um, so it, it, you get the impression that he's probably hearing this. My answer is you're one to talk. <laughs> exactly Dudex steps forward a few steps so you, do you have any relics or other things of the Agenti Sagax writings would be fantastic I have found many things that I might share with friends and allies mm. once they've proven themselves Silas just ends with it's up to you, but I don't think you should trust them. Yeah, I'm also echoing those thoughts. <laughs> now, before we started talking to him, there was a different voice. We haven't seen anybody else, correct? Um, uh, you had heard a conversation uh, between him and Baron uh, Baroness Harquin. Yeah. Um, the 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 words I don't think you made up too many of, but you could tell the the voice. And there was another bit of mumbling which came from the creature that you killed, speaking with multiple voices. You haven't seen another one quite like that one. And what's your relationship to the Baroness? Ah, yes. That is a most complicated puzzle. You know, I've looked at a lot of minds in my time, most of them quite casually. Uh, the people, the victim, I mean, the patrons of the haunted house, as Willoweth tried to describe it, but that is the first time I've ever felt three minds in one. She has a problem. They have a problem. And I have solutions. They also happen to have a back door into this place, which is rather inconvenient and something I didn't discover until later, but could be useful. I think that that could be another ally of mine. Although even more dangerous, perhaps, than you are. Maybe even more dangerous than I am. One should always be wary of your allies. Your enemies will be well known, but allies, those can be truly dangerous and treacherous. 
why they can turn on you, even threaten your death if you don't satisfy all of their needs. I apologize for what's happening behind me. Not aware of what's going on. Yeah, like yeah, some, some oh sort my of goodness. cat attack. The cat is like literally jumping from her her tree to the couch to the floor and making like the pothong, pothong, pothong. zoomies. <laughs> Just imagine that one of the eyeball creatures, one of the green scaled ones, is also kind of moving around a little erratically. Um, Runs just into moving a behind, <laughs> kind of you know, it's it's one of those things where it's got five eyes, but but four of them are looking in a different direction, kind of watching you guys as it circles around, and every once in a while, it kind of bonks a little bit. Well, Silas so, would just uh, openly say, uh, uh, look to Annie and say. It's your call. What do we do? So how much do you know of the technology that they were using, of the of the magics and so forth? Alas, while Oculon grants a great deal of insight, some of the archaic stuff will take me much longer to decipher. I could really use an expert like you. You kind of get the impression that Dudek has gone into academic mode and is kind of kind of almost gleefully looking for the right questions to ask. <laughs> it's a reason why he was susceptible before. I'll respond that right right now we need to find we don't have really time to waste. We do need to find Melora and Graveler. Yeah, and hopefully Catherine too, but and and Catherine. The first two take priority. Catherine can to a certain extent take care of herself. Yeah. Melora is probably alone, let's be real. Graveler tends to to go back to his plane when he would uh, after a little bit. It's and it's been longer than that time. Although I will point out that you still have the summoning stone and you have not tried to summon Graveler. I didn't realize I saw the stone. Okay. I don't oh, yeah. think you tried. No. We still have the stone. We just haven't tried summoning him because it would pull him away from Melora. Right, right. Yeah, we probably... That was one of, the, one of the speculations, yes. Yeah. But doesn't he, like, go back into the earth at, after a certain time or normally normally it's normally not yes yeah okay but if he's Fine. in a different plane than the stone who the fuck knows yeah might as well just for melora's safety might as well leave him with her unless we really really need him not risk not risk him being there and taking him away from her yeah, because I, I really don't want Edwin to kill me. <laughs> now, I'm not sure of all of the needs you have, but I will say we're well positioned to try to find our way through. These little um, enclaves, these little outposts created by uh, the late Argentis Sagax are linked, or at least they were. I've been trying to form the link here to another one, but unfortunately it's not quite working. The pieces and parts aren't quite in place. I suspect that some of them may lie beyond the other portal. Um... Do I remember correctly in that the things that are helping keep us alive also might help us find the thing that we're looking for here? Yeah, they were set to, I believe, glow um, when you come within a certain range. 
see if I can find it. Okay. That. Then Silas is going to wander around uh, with it concealed in his hand and just see if it starts glowing. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Yeah, so in part, they are um, anchored to the material plane so that you don't get lost. Um, I remember how much he actually told you about them. Um, I know if they get busted, we might get pulled home or we might just be left here. Um, Basically, what I remember was that they were a link to get back home. Yeah, I don't think he told you the rest of the stuff. Um, he would have told you that to to use it as a uh, um, a compass towards those things, it does require you to concentrate on it. Basically, it's an action and a perception roll, so it's not always on. Yep, that's what he'll do. Just focus on on uh perceiving as he walks around okay um go ahead and make a perception check then okay how much walking around is he going to do is he going to leave the central area or just around the pillars or what uh he'll walk mostly i the whatever areas he can access in this room, like within the walls, uh, and he'll walk down the like the bridge looking thing here and okay. back. Um, so while Silas is pacing around, kind of taking a look at things, um, actually, uh, uh Tao would just say. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to talk to my uh, associates. We still have a few things to work out. Perhaps you would like to be included in this conversation, friend Dudek. I would be honored. Now, the rest of you can take a moment to breathe and relax. Nothing threatens you here. Speak amongst yourselves. I will... Close my eyes, so to speak. All right. None of his eyes actually close <laughs> when he says that, but <laughs> he does kind of wander over. And um, the creatures make sort of guttural noises that after a while you kind of realize are more like punctuation than words. And yet, Dudek and Tao are having a conversation and it gets kind of technical. If anybody wants to listen into it, it'll be an arcana roll. Um, but uh, Silas is busy kind of wandering around and they kind of move off to one side. Um, so leaving right, I'll listen into the conversation themselves. or try to. Okay. Arcana, that's a minus one modifier, I believe. It <laughs> sure is. Oh, 15. 15 is not bad. Um, with no proficiency in Arcana, it quickly leaves you behind in terms of the technicals. Um, but you kind of get some some elements like um, focusing energy and trying to find the appropriate configuration to to uh, to rearrange the multiplane spectrum of consideration, uh, allowing you to create a small. And it kind of goes on and on from that sort of thing. Uh, and it's sort of like the general gist of it is this thing is broken. And they've been trying to put it back together and they don't have all the right parts. Gotcha. And so the parts are the thing that that uh Tao seems interested in. And Dudek is fascinated because he's he's actually pulled out a little book and he's starting to write notes and he shows a diagram to Tao, and Tao's like, Amazing, I didn't see that before. For uh, I don't know if Annie's paying attention to the conversation or if Annie has something else she'd like to do. It seems as no, though there's I'm kind of a, a break more here. Attention to the the environment right now. Okay. Um, you can give me a let's call it a survival check. Oh, nineteen. Nineteen, nice. 
in this area, part of what you notice is that there isn't life. Aside from the, the, the group of you, there haven't been cobwebs. There's no sign of, of insects or of any kind of bird. There's, there's nothing other than what you have here. Um, how they made this a, a, a compound to live in, how they survived here, how these people had lived here is kind of beyond you um, in some ways. There's nothing here uh, aside from kind of what they built, what they carved out of the sheer rock of this strange thing. Um, when you kind of look towards the, the, uh, the clouds, the billowing clouds outside, um, you notice that they kind of constantly shift and change. And they also ebb and flow. They, they kind of come in and nearly consume the giant eyeball statue and then kind of draw backward. So there's a sort of almost sea-like uh, experience to them. And in and amongst those clouds, you're sitting there kind of watching. Once in a while, there's sort of a little dark shape. It's there, probably some distance away. Distance is hard to judge, but off in the distance. Just a little dark movement. And then it's gone, fading away in the deep shadow, in the deep, uh, deep clouds. For Silas, as you're walking around, um, the physical transformation or the physical effect of concentrating on this small moat of stone within this matrix of wire is that it does glow ever so faintly, especially as you get closer to the pillars they've created. Um, and with that, you're kind of able to, not entirely dissimilar to the way that that uh, um, detect magic works, you're able to kind of pick out this strand is, uh, is uh, uh, of extra planar power, this, this small bit of crystal. But it seems to give off a strange sparkling aura, which to, to your, your mind is that it's it's incomplete it would be the kind of thing where uh, like a tear of fabric where it's sort of solid in the middle but there's all these frays around the edges and the frays because the the loose threads are there any any tension that's put on those loose threads tends to pull the whole thing apart or threatens to and so these things are are arranged in a way where the threads are kind of connected to other things but as they as they put put any sort of power between them um, they start to decay and break. And you notice that about all three of those pillars. About the very space itself, the floor in this main area is giving off another sparkly vibe, but this time it's because there are small bits of this crystal, almost invisible, actually practically invisible to the human eye or the elven eye or many species of the multiverse eye. Um, Little bits and pieces of the crystal are arranged within the floor itself. It's impossible to see, but because of this extra insight from this, this, uh, this, this object, you get the impression that the entire area was built for this purpose. It just underpowered, and the pillars are not doing enough for it. Something's missing, and that something missing would be able to empower this area. Hmm. Well, I guess then he'll just uh, start walking through the area outside the uh, the wall structures, like down this side area that we hadn't been through. Okay. And he'll just keep primarily focused on that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Dudek, and uh, increasingly, um, you're hearing less and less from Dudek and Tao. Until you start to, the, especially the, the other two are still kind of in the area, as you start to realize that, kind of like the other creatures, both Dudek and Tao 
are sort of making vocalizations as punctuation to a conversation that's no longer vocal. They've moved away from, you know, vocal interface. They may not even realize it. Uh, let's see. Moving around that area. If I have that still written up. Um, you do see another one of those creatures, and, and you kind of get the impression that there are a number of these, these uh, flying creatures, uh, the, the singular small eyeballs, that are kind of moving in a, in a regular pattern around, keeping an eye on things, every once in a while stopping to examine uh, a, a spot on the wall or starting to examine the, the, some of the carved uh, shapes you see in the walls themselves. Um, the, the impression that you might get as a player, uh, Pat, is kind of like drones with a random search pattern. They aren't methodical, but they are kind of moving around. And as things catch their attention, they pay a little more attention to something and then they move on to something else. And they don't always stop in the same places and they don't seem to to put a grid pattern together or anything like that. It's it's driven by something you're not sure what, what path they're following, what sort of thing they're following. In that first area, um, you know you kind of see the the remnants of what had been stone furniture. It looks as though there was a large curved desk, a carved desk and curved, uh, made out of solid stone. Uh, it, there are scorch marks still embedded in the very top of it, um, and a chair which is behind it and, and cracked in two. Um, some sort of massive battle took place there or something. Some sort of power was expended. No sign of a corpse in that location, however. Just around the corner um, from there, you see another another body, uh, much like the others. Uh, have his name here somewhere. Uh, looks like a dwarf, uh, much like the others, um, wearing the remnants of of armor. Um, the armor itself looks like it's made of stone plates. It would have been extraordinarily heavy, um, but while it shows some sign of similar burning like you'd seen before, it still seems to be intact. Um, but it is very definitely built for a dwarf, and you can't imagine someone carrying something that large. What sites are you using? Because you can use one or the other, either the site of Detect Magic or the site of this this um, crystal object, the the amulet. Um, okay, if, if he can't use both, then uh, he'll mostly be using the amulet, but anytime he enters a new area, he'll stop for a minute and switch back to ma uh, detect magic. Eldritch okay. Sight. Um, you definitely detect magic coming from the centerpiece of this particular uh, set of armor. Um, some sort of, I think it's evocation. It's okay. only barely visible behind the armor itself. It might not be ev evocation. I'll have to check on that. Um, and as you kind of walk and you're looking, you get this uh, and you activate the um, the uh, the amulet itself. Um, it glows suddenly with a large spark and kind of leans a little bit within the, the lattice of, of wire and indicates to the southeast of you um, what looks like, kind of out of place, a wooden armoire. Doesn't look that old, but it's standing there. Okay. Um, what it, just uh, as he's looking at, what is this blue? That's where that's coming from. Oh, that okay. That's the armoire. Okay. Yeah. That's what it looks like right now. Okay. He'll walk a little closer. Okay. Does, and now the amulet practically is 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 floating on its own straight towards this. Okay. He's keeping a tight hold on it. Okay. Um well he'll uh reach out and trying to open the armoire. Um 
from this side, it opens easily. And as you kind of open up the doors, they do give off a bit of a creak. It's hard to make that quiet. You can try to. No. Okay. Um, it opens as a, as a double door opening up. And standing before you, about eight feet tall, about three and two and a half, three feet wide, is what appears to be a shimmering pool of metallic silver. It's surrounded by a um, what looks like a jade and quartz frame. And it seems to to move almost like it's a horizontal vat of water. It seems opaque at the moment. Is it horizontal or is it like, is it a vertical plane that acts like it's horizontal? Sorry, it is. Yes, it's a vertical plane that acts horizontal. Pardon me. I okay. think I misspoke. Um, well, he'll put the amulet back around his neck uh, right. so that it's not going anywhere. Um, and he'll. Uh, hmm. Just to be on the cautious side, he's going to go back up and search the dwarf first. <laughs> okay. Do you leave the doors touching. open? Yes. Okay. Um, and he's going to try and see what that thing on the the armor's chest cent uh, central area was. Okay. It is beneath the armor. Okay. He will try and to reach just basically the armor. Um. Make a strength check. Like he'll try and go in from the neck or something. Uh, let's see, strengths. Uh, um, we well, go. then I'll make it an athletics or an 12. acrobatics. Okay. That's just pure uh, strength. Yeah, when yeah. you first first attempt uh, and you kind of looking at it, you can't even separate the plates. They are enormously heavy. Um. But if you try to go in from the top, I'll say that's an acrobatics roll. Uh, it will be disgusting because you will be going through a uh, skeleton. That's fine. It's all dry. Four. Yeah, you find your arm kind of hung up on probably the rib cage. Uh, it's dry and it's dusty. There's no <laughs> sign of, of, of uh, organs at all. Uh, the head kind of lolls off to the side. You can see that it has also that same caved out uh, portion of its skull where one eye was. Mm. Um, and so you can't really reach in from there. Um, you also kind of encounter a uh, what feels like chain, um, which means there's a chain shirt underneath all of this, kind of holding it together. Hmm. He'll switch back to Eldritch Sites. Can he tug a bit of the chain up and see if it's the chain shirt that's magical? Um, Eldritch Sight. Oh, that is the detect magic. Yeah, that's the detect um, magic one. Right. Yeah, as you kind of, I, I kind of imagine you kind of pull a little bit and you kind of peer into the, the neck hole uh, where the once was a full neck is now nothing more than a spine. Um, it does not appear that the chain is magical. Okay. It is light, though. Well... He'll uh, drag the body over to this corner area here. Um, and then he's... Uh, that'll require a strength check. Sure. Because it, it, the, the armor alone is probably weighing... And as you kind of try to move it, it's like the, the armor alone probably weighs about 500 to 700 pounds. Yeah, a six don't yeah, do it. It's, okay. it's not moving, unfortunately. No um, problem. And you're kind of amazed uh, at how anything could have lifted something this strong. Hmm. Hmm. For a moment, he considers leaving it there, but then it's like, but maybe it was a thing that made it strong so it could lift the armor. That would be useful. Um. He's going to start removing pieces of the skeleton from the armor. Um, like literally basically just 
taking the armor off the body uh whatever way you take plate mail off of people okay i just gotta look something up um hmm. i'm not gonna find that in time um yeah starting to disassemble the armor essentially yeah okay i mean like armor comes off it just takes work <laughs> It, it it is meant to come off eventually if you can yes, find the right way to un, unlatch it and unhook it and all that he's not terribly strong at it so yeah he's mostly probably resorting to pulling pieces of the body out of the armor okay what are the others of you doing as you hear um first this loud wooden creak from over in the direction which uh which silas has gone and then a lot of grunting um it's it's very heavy work mm. i'm gonna go see what silas is up to <laughs> there will be a sigh and an eye roll from annie and she walks towards what's going on okay just say um, like what is he getting into now <laughs> ah good medrick I do. Ow! No, stop that. Good. <laughs> oh, <I can't. laughs> the cat has not stopped staring at you. Yeah. No. There's a magic item inside this armor somewhere. Also, if you look over there at the uh, that armoire, there's some kind of possibly dimension warping mirror there. All right. Um, did you the want to take the mirror? Point, he'll say at a lower level, the crystals were pointing towards it. I don't know right. if it's our way out or the thing we're here to find. How big is it? Yes. Then he then he starts, he puts a like boot on the corpse's chest and tries to yank one of its arms off. Uh, have you just uh, tried reaching for it by any chance? Yeah. I, didn't, right, I, I couldn't get far enough. I'll reach for it. bigger too. arms, though. I'll try reach it, re reaching for it first. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm okay. trying to find something, and because you guys went, you went as usual, left from where I thought you were going to go. <laughs> uh, that's totally fine. I just have to catch up a little bit here. Um, okay. Um, that's not what I want. Shoot. So, what are you trying to do? Just reach in. Reach in with with more force. Okay. You can make an uh, acrobatics, uh, or sorry, athletics choice, uh, athletics roll. Pardon me. Um, as I... you look over at the other thing, by the way, um, mm -hmm. you do see that that shimmering um, uh, space there that uh, I described earlier. Mm -hmm. Um. And is Annie going that direction too, or are you gonna? I, I went that direction too with a dramatic okay. eye roll and sigh. Yeah, she's got to make sure we don't fuck anything a, up. <laughs> all three of you can make a perception check while I also look for something uh, here to try to. Perception. No, the answer oh. is no. And uh, Silas, <laughs> Silas will attempt to hold the armor steady. Oh, I don't see shit. I'm just focused the, on this magic item. I guess. Perception. The technical answer is wow. four, and I rolled a higher <laughs> roll than you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I get eight. Wow, okay. I don't think we see anything. All those all those nat twenties from before are kind of uh Yeah, they ran out. <laughs> I'm making Why sure that y'all don't get tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing um, with like this corpse the way that you are. <laughs> all right, athletics check to reach and grab the item. And I'm assisting him. Ah, nineteen. Okay. So uh, well, with an assistance, you actually advantage, right? you get advantage, so you can you can crit yeah, hunt, 19. but no, no crit. Uh, okay, so you're reaching in from the inside, and you get a mitt full of this chain, which is the stuff that's next to the body, and you kind of swing your swim your hand in around, um, and from the inside, uh, you don't find any latch. You just start trying to pull on the armor. Mm -hmm. um, the armor feels like solid stone. 
And so it doesn't come apart. Um, but the chain starts to release from the inside. Uh, and so I'll say you got you you realize it's a chain shirt. It's holding up very well. It's very, very light. Nice. And uh, it's about halfway out. When you start to hear something you weren't really paying attention to. Coming from uh, the direction of the... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can let you that be your first action if you want uh, in a moment, but uh, coming from the direction uh, of the cloud from before, there is the distinct and strange for this place sound of thunder rolling. Let's see if they can actually. This is from the uh, mirror thing? No, this is from the cloud outside by where the okay. eye was. All right. Um, there's the sound of thunder. Um, actually, yeah, uh, they don't really have to check that out. Uh, as you, um, as you hear, um, what could only be described as a raiding call, as in the shouts of several people trying to. Surprise, shock, and simultaneously attack. Um, I have to find a uh, an icon for them because I was not thinking of that particular one. So it's going to get generic icons. Abstract icons. Here we go. I'm going to use them this way. Glad I made these because they are handy. Um, now to put them in the right places. There and one there. So emerging out of, uh, and I'll say, Annie, you were kind of back enough from the other two fighting with this dwarven armor uh, that you. Uh, uh, kind of see it out of the corner of your eye and your your instincts are pretty good so you'll at least be able to see them as they come in as they scream in and they look like um uh small uh, sorry yeah I, well average size i guess you might say uh humanoid forms that are uh kind of glistening black almost onyx crackling lightning surrounds them uh and they have long um uh, I wouldn't describe this long, thin arms and legs uh, that, uh, that end in massive claws that when closed almost resemble a, uh, a flail with spikes on the back of them. Little sparks of lightning float in and around them and they move uh, very quickly as four of them emerge from the uh, cloud uh, screaming uh, and uh, moving toward uh, kind of the central part. So where um, uh, Tau is, where Dudek is uh, technically, and I will be going to the map um, that none of you at home will see. I will move you over, Annie, just because you were kind of on the threshold uh, more than you were over with, with Dudek. Uh, but now screaming in towards them. Uh, actually... Uh, I've got so many things to find. All right. I just, here's the problem with having multiple tabs open, folks, is when you go away from the tab, you're like, where was I again? I was right there. All right. Uh, I just want to see how much this poor little guy has. I don't think it's much. Eh, more than I thought. So uh, as an opening uh, opening strike, because this is kind of their their round of of, uh, of surprise, because none of you had any idea these were coming in, because those were some terrible perception rolls, and everything else was focused on the do deck and uh, other conversation. Uh, I was number three by shinies. <laughs> true. Uh, nine uh, number three comes in and attacks uh, one of the spin spindly creatures that had kind of wandered down and was was. Uh, was looking in that direction. You get the feeling that maybe it, it, it kind of knew something was there, but it didn't really have any idea of what that was. So it will be struck at. Uh, geez. 
Okay, nat 20 uh, for the strike. So there's that plus another one of those. Only two, so 12. So it strikes it hard, and then uh, that one, which is also doubled. Wow, I'm getting nothing but up and down here. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Or six. So yeah, in mechanical terms, we would describe that as 36 points of damage as it strikes out with one of its hands and lightning just crackles all around it. Surprisingly, the creature is not, not dead. Uh, wrong one. Too many windows. Um, but uh, you see it stagger and reel back. Uh, oh, it has to do that too. Jeez. Uh, oh, of course it won't. Go oh, and... Ah, oh, this is a tough little guy. Uh, it does not uh, appear, to, or it kind of shakes itself, and you see its hands kind of clamp down on the stone below it as little rivulets of, of electricity pour over it. Um, but it manages to stand its ground. That was a lot more powerful than I thought. Uh, Dudek is uh, being lined up for another strike himself, and you can see... Um, oh, pardon me. Number three has two more attacks. I, I missed that part. No. Um, that Damn. one. That one misses, amazingly enough. That one does not. Uh, and with that, that creature that had stood for a second or two, yeah, it goes down. It thought it had it. It, it really was doing it so it. good for a second, and then there was nothing it could do. Um. This one comes forward to strike Dudek. Uh, that is definitely a hit. And not a, not as bad an attack. Still significant. As Dudek is wailed upon. Actually, that's a pretty significant attack for him, I should say. Um, sorry, the NPCs won't be just attacking each other. I will have them attack you guys too. Just have to. Uh, find... I'm kind of okay with them fighting each other, except for Dudek. Yeah. Um... Oh, I think. I'm just waiting for Tauzak to like start blasting I beams at them. <laughs> also manages not to to uh, to be stunned. He is struck for a second time. Another nasty hit and for a third time so yeah at this point Dudek is already looking rough he wasn't really expecting an attack and it came anywhere it came anyway uh this one number two will fly over and just make it to beside you annie but not actually get a chance to attack um then this one will be able to attack tau uh Shoot. Need to get another window. Just those things in it. Um, there we are. Uh, and I think Dudek will, or uh, well, that actually misses uh, Tau. His second attack definitely hits Tau and takes the lightning. I does not look as bothered by this as you might think for being a big fleshy ball of whatever. Third strike hits again. Uh, that is all the NPCs going. We'll now roll initiative. Uh, just a second, I will reset the initiative. Uh, roll turns. Go ahead and roll your appropriate initiatives. All right, I select my character. 
Then I go to my sheet. Where yep. is it? And I totally forget how to open my character sheet. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I have to scroll down. Mood. Great. Initiative. Oh, plus one boomerang. Yeah. Right, do you have a plus one boomerang? Quick? <laughs> sure. We aren't going to be able to do the whole combat anyway because we're going to end a little bit early tonight, but we'll get a, a turn or two in. BRB. Everybody got their initiatives in? Yep. I did uh, set things up. I could go to quarter after or a bit after that. Okay. I set things up for seven, so. We will probably just get a, a, a round in. But it. There, yes, I do. Okay. All right. Um, Annie, I believe you are up. Um, hello, I don't hello. think we have. Uh, yep. Metrics right at the bottom initiative. So, so you have this thing. It's it it is it has no feet as you notice when it gets closer. Um, it looks as though it's it's onyx form just sort of dissipates into nothingness. It seems to fly, and it's coming at you with this sparkling uh, uh, onyx spiked um, uh, mallet essentially. Um, um, what I'm going to do then is I am going to. Take out Vice and do a swoop swoop. I'll just roll from here. So 21. That definitely hits. So, um, this is not a sneak attack. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Because that's a so huge amount of it's damage. It's just eight, eight piercing damage. Because it's okay. also, I'm not missing HP, and is it missing HP yet? No, I... No, they just joined the battle. Yep. Yep, uh, so eight magical damage. Okay. And... It does seem to be struck by it, and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it definitely takes a chunk out of it. And I will use just give me a moment here how to fighter i'm gonna do an accent surge and stab it again okay i stab at thee from the heart of darkness actually no oh. no i will i would much prefer disengaging actually i will take my bonus action and disengage Okay. I'll, oh yeah, then you guys get out here. Okay. Uh, I will disengage, and I'm gonna hide behind this pillar. And by hide, I mean I'm not taking the hide action. I'm just yeah. <laughs> by hide, you mean stand behind the pillar uh, conveniently as flat not... as possible without trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would give you partial cover um, just because you're standing behind it if something is straight, straight on to you. But um, yeah, okay. Uh, that's Annie. Uh, Tao. Tao is not happy to be interrupted in his in his speculations. Uh, let's see. That's I'm not back. going to work. I work um, best from afar. I think uh, he is not happy with the thing that's in front of him. And one of his eyes focuses on it, and a beam of pure force pushes out from it. Pew pew. Uh, let's see here. Is that a... Uh, where are we here? Strength saving throw. Uh, ooh, but it stands firm. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um... That is not good. Um, so you do hear a little bit of an eep from him, and then just, uh, well then, harder then. 
uh, as he uses another eye. Um, leave that one connects. That one does connect. Uh, as the four, as the as the, the 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 beam of pure force seems to wash over it, and it almost seems to just sort of stand there, almost uh, uh, a little bit more uh, proudly. Well then, as the as another eye activates and this searing light comes out of it, uh, very much like a laser beam, uh, and the let's see, let's see what the disintegration ray does. Uh, the first one was fifty two. One shot. Uh, no, <laughs> not a one shot. No. But it is a pretty effective hit. Uh, as it, yeah, one hundred and that. Uh, as. Uh, yeah, it strikes right across its chest and carves into it. And you can now see, um, well, I guess Annie's the only one in the position to see. You can now see it as it carves into it. It is like carving stone. Um, these things are somehow some form of living stone. Uh, and yeah, it's just going it, to, it's going to try again this time with a different, uh, a, a, a black and green colored ray. Uh, which it fails to uh, rid itself of. And the death ray. <laughs> I love the names of these things. Uh, uh, so where it had hit before, it kind of crisscrosses with another eye beam. And this time the rock just crumbles into dust in that area. Nice. It still stands. Uh, it, it took those three nasty rays, well, two of the nasty rays, uh, but still stands. Uh, and you can hear a little bit of of angry angry frustration. Uh, that is now uh, Dudek's turn. Dudek is wavering on his feet. Um, yeah, I think I can do that. Um, yeah, uh, he's wavering. Oh, I could have done that. Whoops. Oh well. The things you realize when you have uh, an NPC, uh, I think he's just going to go ahead and uh, it. <laughs> I have to describe it this way because it sounds too silly, but um, you see Dudek, and you've never really seen Dudek fight. I don't think before. Um, I think as once maybe, he's he's reeling a little bit from this, uh, and then he kind of readies his feet, plants them, clasps his hands together, and then gestures with his hand as tiny little motes of power fly out of his finger. His version of Magic Missile. Um, if I can do this. Uh, it's it not going to be fast enough. That I'll be back. Okay. Uh, so this does, how many is it? It's three to start plus, so six. Okay. Uh, D four plus six. Twenty points of force damage into the chest of the one that's in front of him. Uh, um, and then he takes a stance, uh, drawing his hands together. And you can see him starting to limber up his limbs as he moves and appears to uh, both stay in the same place and yet move at the same time. That is his dodge bonus action. Uh, and that's it for the moment for him. Uh, the Nothics. They run. They've already seen one of their friends uh, basically blown to bits. They're not going to see another one uh, as they all run for the hills. I almost moved a dead guy. <laughs> uh, these guys, I don't have them on the initiative as separate, but the little flying guys. Uh, have a particular use here. That's what they're for. All right, the one on the left uh, will do, sure. So to number one, 
It is a hey. shoot. Constitution. Uh, it resists. So you see a beam of uh, probably a silver purple light go out, and then a beam of black light as both of them pass, miss. As this one on the left tries to attack number one, the one on the right tries the same. Uh, and see if he can find a. Unfortunately, yeah, both of them miss. So the so the little the little guys uh, with the Ow! four technically arms are firing out these rays, and nothing is happening. Silas, you're up. Huh. Uh. Okay. Well, sounds like people are in trouble. Is this area up here passable, or is that too narrow for someone to go through? Um, I'd say it's difficult terrain. Okay. It'll cost you double to move through it, but it's passable. If you wanted to do it with an acrobatics check, you might be able to squeeze through there more quickly, but... Um... Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think I can do that. Uh, actually, uh, which is, yeah, 30, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And, uh, Yeah, I don't. What if I have for range? I don't think I actually can do anything right now. But he'll pull out. A, he'll pull his shield off his back, and uh, he'll grab some loose stones at his feet so he can uh, cast a cantrip next round. Okay. I've just shared the map screen so people who might watch this at home can get some visualization of what's going on. Um, sorry, what was the last thing you did? Uh, I just got my shield out and grabbed some stones off the ground. Okay. Um, their turn. Okay. Three. It and number four has it. All right, as they begin to fight once more, uh, number one is going to take an, uh, another strike at... Um, Wait, did I skip my turn? No, you're at the very end. Okay, because I thought one... Right, they had a surprise round. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, you notice that on two of them, their hands are crackling, uh, number three and number four. The other two do not have crackling hands just yet. However, uh, because of the way... Um, that didn't roll with this advantage. Second one's a 16. Uh, you see Dudek in his firm stance look at this massive hand coming in, and then you see his eyes close as a projected shield of energy surrounds him. Uh, this is my attempt at a wizard monk. And it bounces off the outside. Um, second attack fails. Third attack fails. So, Dudek, once once kind of vulnerable to this thing, now these massive fists are just bouncing off this energy. And you can see his shoulders squaring a little bit more uh, as you kind of get the sense of, okay, this is working now. This is good. This is, this is working now. <laughs> um, number... Two is going to go after the the little spectator dude that's right next to you. Um, not realizing that you're there yet, Silas. Uh, just straight up attacks. One, two, and three. All three of those hit. I may not really have needed three, but um, eh, 
not too much damage. So a 24. Well, actually, yeah, quite a bit of damage for that creature. Uh, number four, undaunted by the big uh, uh, beholder, is going to go after him. He has regained his uh, lightning strike. Uh, that hits. And does a pretty big chunk of damage on the first strike. Uh, second strike misses, I want to say. Third strike misses. Oof. Uh, however, he will be soon joined by his brethren, who has also regained his lightning strike. Miss, miss, hit. Okay. So, despite the flurry of things that are happening around him, um, uh, Kauzak Riva is is looking hurt. Um, he's withstood, withstood a lot so far. He seems to be somewhat of a focus of attack at the moment. Um, but he's also holding his own. Medrick, you're up. All right. So who looks the most beat up between Tarzak and uh, Dudek? You're going to have to move, I think, to be a little more aware of that, because you're way over where there where the armor is. Huh. Hold on, I, I have too many windows, and I just lost my... <laughs> My roll to one. Oh, here we go. I will move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here. That's as far as I can go, I think. I can't see. Okay. Yep. And from there, you can see the entire room, including one of these things right in front of you. Uh, it is it is slightly taller than you, but mostly because it's floating off the ground. Um, okay. but between them, uh, from there, I'd say that Dudek looks worse. Shit. Because I can't get there even if I sprint. Yeah, he's 55 feet away from me right now. And you can see that there's a, a, a line of these things. Yeah, I'll sprint. All... One, two, okay. three, four. This guy gets an attack opportunity, probably. And number two would, yes. So he'll strike at you as you pass by. 12 will not hit. Nope. So I'll go here and stand defensively. Wait, uh, is sprinting a bonus action? Can I summon a spiritual weapon or no? Uh, sprint is your action. Okay. Yep. So bonus action. So you still have a bonus action. Spiritual weapon pops out. Okay. Whoosh. Spinning hammer of fire. That here somewhere. What did your... Characters. Spiritual weapon. Let me make sure you can use it. How did it not go there? Go. What is it? Is it there? Uh, I, I don't see it. There we go. Oh, here it is. Um, make sure you can move it here. I cannot. Uh, controlled by. Go. You should be able to control it. So go ahead right. and place it where you want to. And between three and four, which one looks the most beat up? Between three and four? Um, yeah, definitely four. That's the one that's crisscrossed with massive grooves. All right. Well, four is, I'm going to, the spiritual weapon is going to attack four. Yeah, right. It's uh, only my spellcasting modifier, right? For the attack? That I believe is correct. Okay. Well, it's your proficiency in spellcasting modifier, yeah. It's your spellcasting attack total. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that would be. So, seven. That's way better than a three. <laughs> hey, now 20. There you go. Good shot. One, and I believe it's a 1d8. Or a 2d8 in this case. Um, yep, plus, I, don't have the, okay. I don't have the spell in front of me. Swing! But... 14. Yep. Yeah, because of the points. crit, it would be two. So, yeah. All right. Clunk. That took a massive chunk out of it, uh, burning down its side. Uh, yep. Uh, as you see it, uh, you see it kind of 
uh, I, I'd imagine that the spiritual weapon hits it from the back and kind of cracks down the back of it. And now you can kind of see where, because of the big strikes it's taken across the front and the strike across the back, it's almost dissolving into different pieces. Mm -hmm. Still some sort of holding together, but but barely. All right. Explain more where that came from. All right. That's your turn. Yep. Okay, Annie, you're up. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I am seeing that Dudek is not doing good. Well, at, at the moment, he's holding his own because this thing is beating away at his, his blue glowing shield. But yeah, he, he looks like those first couple of hits really hurt. Uh, I'm going to move to here. Um, okay. Number one is engaged with an ally, so that would give me sneak attack for a bow attack. That's true. So I will do a short bow attack with my magical bow. Ooh, 17. Uh, 17 bounces off. It kind of glances off the shoulder. Darn. Okay. And as a bonus action, I'm going to give um, a do deck advantage on his next hit on number one. Or no, he, he was using magic missile, wasn't he? He did, yes. Okay. I'm going to actually give Medric advantage to hit number four if he so chooses. Excellent. And, right. I've, and this well, is again. Unless uh, Tauzak nukes him, then I'm hitting him again. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is a shouted uh, uh, word of support. Can you give any idea what that, that shout sounds like? What oh, the hell are these think. things? Get it, kill it, kill it dead. <laughs> Get, gotcha. get it, get it, get it. That's I don't the do the magic things much. <laughs> <laughs> that is what, uh, that's what inspires Medric. Okay. That is um, Hit with a hammer. action bonus. So now it's Tao's turn. Uh, Tao is uh, kind of grinning wide. You can see this from your perspective, especially uh, Medric, and it looks terrifying um, because you get the feeling that he he's, not entirely worried about this now. Uh, he was surprised more than anything else. Um, well, I'm glad he's on our side. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just going to be straight up uh, as the 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 ugly buzzing with energy um, uh, thing he's going to start with, uh, which was the disintegration ray uh, strikes. Turning it into, how is this described? Uh, a uh, a pile of fine gray dust. <laughs> um, as yet, yeah, it is just utterly obliterated from that first strike. Um, and then it turns to the one beside it. Um, first, it's going to try to just shove him away. Doesn't always work that well. Doesn't work in this case either. Um, and just die. Uh, whoops, that would be the damage. Let me make it have its roll. Oof, yeah, no, it utterly fails uh, and takes 57 points of necrotic damage as you just see uh, this massive gouge in its, uh, its front. Going right from its head all the way down, it is now practically split in two, but still stands. Uh, that's Tao's turn. Uh, Dudek is up. Uh, Dudek will do what Dudek has done because that was effective. And he still has fourth level spells left. Um, so that is 22 points of damage to the one in front of him. And once more, takes the bonus action to dodge which in this case manifests as him standing there, <laughs> not not really moving at all, but hey, monk, what are you going to do? Uh, the Nothics are gone. Silas, you're up. Hey. Um, 
That creature beside you is hanging on by a thread, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the floating oh, smash. Spectator. Oh, okay. I was hoping it was the other thing that was hanging on by oh. the thread. Um, no, nope, it is fine and untouched. Well, slightly untouched. Mm. Okay. I am... Uh, Silas will uh, sh cast Shillelagh on the staff and then booming blade the uh the the big obsidian thing in front of him okay body only gets a 13 to hit the 13 does not hit uh the booming blade only works if you hit is that right yep okay Unfortunately, it's uh, it's just so so stone like that it, it, you kind of you hit it really really hard and they have that effect of the of the wood itself kind of bouncing back and bang, which is a little bit annoying to the hand. Um, is that you still have a move if you want to? Um, yeah, yeah, it'll get an attack of opportunity as I move away. It actually won't because uh, Medric moved by it before. Cool. Human uh, shield or orc shield? Orc distraction. Five. Really. <laughs> it's going to go back up that way. Okay. Um, it is their turn. So we'll do one to the end of the round and then we'll we'll call it, I think, for the day. Um, so first of all, only three of them now. Oh, okay. None of them seem to have the lightning return. Uh, the first one, once more, um, trying to beat away at this um, uh, this stalwart monk. Uh, that's a miss. That is a that would be a hit, but he'll once again use shield. Uh, so he has a couple of spells left. And oof, I think even with the shield that's going to hit. Uh-oh. Uh yes, that will hit. Not nearly as much damage, but he's also very, very wounded. Uh, and you see the the it kind of extend its claws outward as opposed to the, the sort of bald fist it had before, and just whack, whack. And then the fingers go through and kind of pierce into Dudek's shoulder. He gives out a small cry of pain. Still stands. Somehow, That's good. Still stands. Uh, number two is going to do the same thing to the tiny little guy in front of him. Oh. Uh, that is most definitely a hit. It's not doing well. Uh, a second hit. Uh, yep, still still up wow third hit third hit misses <laughs> little guy is fighting for all he's worth and the one in front of um son of tau uh, that is a hit um, i don't think that's a hit no that's not a hit uh and a third Two hits, only a minimal amount of damage, though. Even so, even with only a minimal amount of damage, um, you can see that Tau is very, very, very wounded. Shit. Um, he's taken a lot of damage directly from these things, but the smile keeps getting wider and wider, and particularly after just turning something into dust, uh, he seems to be quite happy about that. Medric, you're up. So who looks the worst between... Uh... Dudek and Tau. Dudek by far. Okay. So Dudek gets a level four cure wounds. So did you move the long way around to get there or? Yeah, I moved out. Like I guess here. you can you can move through. Yeah, okay. Trying to avoid the uh the other attacks, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um okay. Dudek gets a how much? Cure wounds. 17 hit points. Nice. Uh, so to give four, you some pers 
to give you some perspective, that nearly quadruples his current hit points. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will that... move the spiritual weapon, put it between these okay. two, and which one looks the most beat up between one and three? Um, make a perception check. It's pretty close. Perception, I think, is five. 23. Oh, no problem. Uh, yeah, the one that's been facing directly off with uh, with Tau is the one that's in more danger. All right, well, the, the spiritual weapon will take a wide swing at him. And eh, does an 11 hit? An 11 does not. Buhis. Well, it's the, the hammer will flame in a circle in a threatening manner then, next to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, we were calling it at six. We could go on if people have a bit more time, but I think we're kind of close. I can, like the, it's five I to can, six, so. Yeah, I yeah. can go another round if other people want to. It's up to you. You're the one with the hard eyes. Yeah, so. I can go another yeah. round, definitely. Okay, okay. we'll go no, for another I round. Can, yeah. Um, Perfect. Annie? You're up. I will. Um, you said that number three is the worst looking of the two? Yep. Um, uh, that's the one he attacked. I would have you make a perception check to know for sure if that's the worst looking, but okay. they're both looking pretty bad. Okay. You know what? No, I'm protecting Duda. I'm going to uh, steady aim. Okay. Um, which is my bonus action and gives me advantage on the roll to hit number one. Ooh, 18 on the die. Oh yeah, that's definitely a hit. Perfect. 28. Ooh. 28. Okay. It is not down, but that did a big chunk out of it. Uh, well, this time the you aim a little bit lower and you actually take a full chunk out of the shoulder as it goes by. Perfect. Um, let me see here. Uh, okay, and yeah, I will. That that is my turn. Okay, Tao's turn. Um, Tao gathers himself a little bit, uh, and. Hmm. Yep, I, I think it's going to be starting off with a death ray because <laughs> he's not happy with these things. Um, that is a save. What? Uh, yeah, there's no there's no half damage either. So nope. it literally nope. is able to kind of step out of the way. Um, a little more frustrated. Uh, it's now disintegration. Oops, I need to save against that. Uh, which it does not save against. It takes the full might of that disintegration. Um, does not go down. Um, yeah. Oh. Hmm, okay. Yeah. And then this light pink ray fires out. And number three stops fighting and looks up to what now it might presume as its friend. That's Tao's turn. He seems to have made a friend. Uh, Dudek. Dudek, same... Uh, it was 64 plus 6. Oh, wow. That's that's a dramatic back and forth. Um, as he fires off again, six magic missiles, and once again takes a defensive stance because this is not what he normally would do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's a little bit out of sorts. Um, uh, yeah, so he is still full-on defensive. Uh, 
um, out of fourth level spells. Uh, that brings us to those guys who've gone. Silas is up. Okay. Well, yeah. I think Silas still has a uh, better angle from here. So move over by the corpse. He'll charge up some magic stones and whip one of them at the uh, number two. Okay. Yeah, I think the angle will work. Um, unfortunately, it kind of bounces off the, the hard stone. No problem. Um, it's just one stone at a time? Yep. No, that's okay. all he's got. Okay. Uh, their turn. Ooh, only two of them left. One further back. Wait, there's only two left? I thought there was three. All right, three. Uh, no. one three is, is now a friend. Right, right. Uh, I wish, is there a heart shape pattern I can add on? I will add, I will add that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. So number one, it, neither of them got their lightning back. Number one, again, going after Dudek. Um, uh, Dudek will once again shield. Uh, he's running out of spells pretty rapidly. He's not really an offensive guy. Um, that will mean that misses, and that misses. So no effect on that. Oof. Number two, going after uh, the little guy here. Just a regular attack. Definitely hits. Bob and, and weave, little guy. Or not. Little guy, little guy. Yeah, you cry out, Bob and weave, little guy. And little guy goes, huh? Clunk. Gets smacked. Splat. <laughs> oh. um, now we'll turn its He's attention. He's not spectating anymore. Uh, over to, uh, oops, ran right into him. <laughs> right into him. Uh, nope, we'll go after uh, Tao. Um, utterly fail and utterly succeed. Okay, that's how the randoms go. Um, picking away, but not actually able to take him down. Uh, now, uh, uh, how far does that ability go? Uh, hmm sure um he looks but uh, tau looks between the two targets that are there sees that dudek is in trouble and kind of uh with a murmur go attack my the enemy of my new friend we'll kind of wander over now we have uh these on these kind of attacks. This, that's a hit, and that's a hit. Ooh. Okay. The one standing in front of Dudek uh, is surprised to be smashed by one of his other allies. <laughs> Still stands, but looks like he's on the last thread. Medrick, you're up. It's hammer time. All right. So I will swing at number one with the hammer. That's physical attack three plus. Can you tell it's been a while since I've played this? Yeah, I know. I'm, so I'm right there, buddy. Strength modifier plus. Uh, the hammer? Uh, your hammer or the yeah, uh, hammer. spiritual weapon? Your hammer, my yeah. Hammer. So proficiency plus strength. Right, I that's the other one I was thinking about. Okay, so it's yeah, the same thing think... for both. Gotcha. Ah! 25. If I hit, guess what? Eight. How? Uh, what is Splat. the effect of your hammer attack? As it as it is uh, hanging literally on the one hit point it had left. Describe. I'll how swing you underhand because I don't want to accidentally hit Dudek. Okay. And it, it's it's just like an uppercut, but with a hammer at the end. It's like boom. So I'm assuming okay. its head flies off a little bit, falls into the chasm. Uh, it, the dramatic thing matters. Is is head shatters because these are quite literally stone creatures, uh, and yes, the the entire body kind of falls backward, no longer animated, and slides down into the abyss below. Bye. And the spiritual weapon will go. You did see number three now. attack number one, so. Okay. And swing at number two. Number two. 
Ah, oh, that's a twelve. That, that is unfortunately a miss. It as it's able to kind of, kind of, it barely even scratches it. It's one of those things though where it leans back and you have that slow mo with the fire kind of licking, licking yeah. across its face, and then it's like back to to fight. Uh we can go another round. Still good. Yeah. Yeah, I can okay. do one more round. I think. Then I should Annie? probably get ready. I will. Um, oh, I am unmuted. Perfect. Um, you good I to go. Take two steps over here and shoot at number two. Okay. Ah, where is my? There we go. Um, get the short bow. Normal roll. Does uh, I didn't know. Unfortunately, it's 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 the way they're made out of stone. There's all kinds of of odd angles, and you keep finding, unfortunately, the odd angle first, and it kind of goes glancing off. Well, I might as well use my action surge then. Okay. This worse. Oh, that's that's tough. Um, oh well. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's kind of finding both those angles. So now you know the places not to hit it. You've got the rest lined up. Perfect. I'll tell uh, Tauzek to not hit it there and give it okay. advantage on, on the next hit on it. <laughs> okay. Tauzek isn't doing physical attacks, though. He's making them dance around. So That's yeah. fair. But his stuff was all save-based. Oh, uh, his, attack his, his yeah. all, all yeah. saves. Um, yeah. Then I'll he give... can just bite it, but he seems to be content to, to blow it to bits. That's fair. Uh, I'll give advantage to Medric then. Same, same, same thing. Don't hit it there. All right. Uh, if I hit it, Tau, don't do that. Tau will hmm, can't do more than one of those. So, uh, yeah, Tau is going to uh, let loose with a different kind of ray. This is a uh, kind of a black and gold ray, uh, which is going to take it onto its constitution. Ah, and it fails. And you notice that the creature is kind of there. It's kind of lurching back from being struck and bounced off. And it's pulling back its hand as if to strike and stops moving as it is now paralyzed. Uh, and for that, then, uh, I think Tao will let out a little laugh uh, as he fires off a disintegration ray, which cannot miss because it's not able to make dexterity saving throws. Uh, and then a death ray. Oh, oh, right. That's 115 between those two. Yeah, <laughs> 79. Oh my god, uh, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, as it kind of kind of freezes it there and lets out that little laugh, and then across one side, and then across another, and the thing falls and crumples into four pieces that then turn to dust. As they hit the ground, hey, oh. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that. Um, are you going to be okay? You look kind of beat up. Are you suggesting I'm vulnerable? And there's a look in his eye. It's a little bit of a challenge. Well, no, I'm you just wondering. Uh, would you? Are you in need of healing? If I can trust you to heal me, but first help my friend. And he gestures with half of the eye stalks towards uh, uh, Dudek, who is is kind of relaxing a little bit and then kicking the ground where the there's like one little chunk that's still of the creature there, and he kind of poof, knocks it off to the edge. <laughs> the other that's one's still measure. standing there. <laughs> the other one's still standing there, and uh, and uh, you see uh, Tao kind of drift over to it. Uh, and then stare intently, and all of his eyes stare intently on this creature. Uh, and it kind of turns, and you can kind of see its uh, kind of lolling head. Now, tell me your secrets. And that's where we'll end it for tonight. See what uh, Tauzek pulls out of his head. Um... Thank you very much, guys, for playing. Thanks for for being patient with me as I try to get back to what the hell we do here because it's been. Thanks a while. for running. <laughs> well, thanks for being um, patient for me, like trying to find like what modifiers do I use? What spell is yeah, this? What's you know, going on? I have no memory. I'm of this like, 
<laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, what were those things going to attack? I uh oh oh boy. So um <laughs> <laughs> we will hopefully be back to our semi-regular schedule every two weeks. Hopefully that's the case. For those of you who are following along at home, you can find the episodes on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Uh, we weren't able to stream this one, so if you were looking for it on the stream, which is normally twitch.tv slash ENCAF1, I'm saying that too fast, ENCAF1, uh, we will hopefully, I will hopefully get the hardware gremlins under control, and we'll get back to that on the regular schedule next time but um until then um yeah i don't know do i never do have an ending do it game on game on but it was like don't drown and that also works all right <laughs>